Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Selenese Corporation, ticker CE. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. First up, we want to look at market cap. This is a $12 billion market cap company with $14 billion enterprise value. This suggests there's about $2.5 billion of leverage on this business and it's operating in the chemicals industry. Now, if we look at the business description, they are technology and specialty materials materials company. They manufacture and sell high performance engineered polymers in the United States and internationally. I'm going to guess that they're not technology in the sense that most people think about it, um, but they're just talking about the technology of how their high performance engineered polymers work. So they work in three segments, engineered materials, acetatile, and acetyl chain. Um, and they produce for various industries. So that really tells us everything we need to know about the company in terms of um, what it does. They're headquartered in Irving, Texas. U.S.-based company here, um, but specialty materials, specialty chemicals company. Gives us the framework we need. Now, return on invested capital. First thing I notice here is you have one year of loss in the last 20 years. That's 19 out of 20 years with profits, which would suggest it's a relatively high-quality company. My bar for high-quality companies tends to be 20 or 19 straight years of profitability with only one loss allowable to get to that 19. They have one year of losses, so they would pass that bar. Now, the second thing I notice when I look on this return on invested capital chart is it's quite cyclical. It's not very stable. You see lots of ups and downs. It's bouncing around, bounce up, 2009, 12%, down to 9%. So there's three, it goes from two, in 2008 to 6%, 12%, 9%, jumping around a lot. There's a lot of change year to year. 2012, you're at 8%. 2013, you're at 20%, immediately back down to 10% down to 5%. That cyclicality is a negative for the business quality. So although you're getting decent numbers here, um, it is pretty cyclical. Now, if we ignore 2015, from every year from 2013 to 2021, you had double digit return on investor capital, which is actually quite good. So now if you're cyclical, but the bottom of your cyclical cycle is like this 11%, this 12%, that's okay. That means that, okay, yes, I'm cyclical. I might be a little less predictable, but I'm still getting really good returns on capital. But your lows are in the single digits, you know, 4%, 6%, 8%. So it's not as clean cut if that was just a cyclical all above this 20% line. It is cyclical down here in the bottom. Side. So that's a little bit of a negative for it. Now, 10-year medium returns all look amazing. 10% return on assets, 13% return on invested capital, 29% return on equity. These all pass what I'm looking for. I want double-digit numbers on return on invested capital. I want 15% plus for return on equity. Everything here looks really, really good. And when we take that into consideration that this suggests a high-quality company, and you see a PE of six, all of a sudden I'm really attracted to what I'm seeing here. This looks like an incredibly undervalued company. Um, I like to buy stocks. I like to buy high quality stocks at a below average price. Average price is a PE of 15 and a PE of six is clearly below average. These returns are clearly above average. So you do have some cyclicality. It suggests it might be a little bit average here, but these returns are above average. This price is below average. I'm seeing everything I'd like to see in terms of a, a good buy for this company. But the big question I'm going to have here is when I look at 2020 and 2021, they're clearly abnormal. Only 2013 had similar return on invested capital. So I'm wondering if there's a COVID effect that they benefited from. Especially when you see revenue growth at 2%, asset growth at 3%, and yet EPS is growing at 20%, something is going on here, and I think maybe this last year is a little irregular. For instance, if you look at 2020's return revenue, you had $5.6 billion. In 2021, it was $8.5 billion. So something here is very strange to have a 50% revenue growth year when you don't see that anywhere else in the decade. So if you simply use these last year numbers, everything looks amazing. I mean, you have your EPS at $16 per share. Um, that's very, very good. But you can clearly see that their operating margin of 22% is similar to their gross margin in a normal year. So something is not right here, and this is likely unsustainable. What that means is that your valuation ratio is probably... Um, making the company look way more attractive than it truly is. And I'd want to use something like a 2018 and 2019 number of $9 a share or $7 per share. So something like a $7 per share might be the more accurate way to think about this company. So if we see a share price of 113 $7 a share, that's about 15 times earnings. So now you're saying, okay, this is an average price at 15 times earnings. 
for an average to above average company. Now that's still good, but it's not drop dead amazing as a PE of six for a high average company. So something to keep aware of, but otherwise all these numbers are looking really, really good. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button in the bottom. Please subscribe. Your subscriptions help me to drive the growth of the channel. And I really need those subscriptions to help the YouTube algorithm tell me that you're enjoying my work. So please do that. Now let's go to the income statement. When we go to the income statement, we can clearly see some good things here. Um, every year is profitable on the gross profit line. Every year is profitable on the operating profit line. Every year is profitable on the net income line. Now, what I was expecting is here. 2020 was a really bad year for COVID, but they had non-operating income of 1.6 billion. And that's distorting your EPS. So clearly 2020 should have been worse than 2019 based upon these numbers on an operating basis, but it looks a lot better than it is, which means that this number is a lot less reliable. In addition, you have 400 million of non-operating income in 2021. So that income is also not reliable. So these $16 per share earnings figures are not real. They're not, they should not be used. Um, so again, I go back to that. They're probably closer to PE of 15. Now it's not as bad as that because this 400 million, you know, is still going to be above these numbers. Um, but you're still closer to seven or nine dollars EPS instead of the sixteen dollars EPS. Yeah. With that said, one thing I really like here as well is it looks like they're doing consistent share buyback. Shares outstanding is declining each and every year. They're consistently buying back shares. I always love to see that in terms of um, companies that I invest in. Now we have four billion, four point four billion in property plan equipment. Let's see how that compares to long-term debt. Three billion of debt. Um, so a little bit of debt here, um, but not a huge amount. You do have pension liabilities. I really don't like this. Um, it is declining over time. So I want to make sure that they've frozen their pension because pension liabilities can often be much higher than they are stated. They are retaining earnings over time in order to grow the business. Nothing concerning there. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this, this all looks fine. There's nothing exceptional to look at here. Cash flow statement. So again, positive cash flow from operations each and every year. They do have an acquisition here and they have, they got rid of some money here in 2021. So this stuff is doing some of that distortion in our system. You can clearly see they're having to reinvest consistently each and every year. They are requiring capital reinvest. Um, so not all of your free cash flow is true free cash flow. You have some significant capex, you know, 30, 40 percent, 20 to 40 percent of the inner of the cash flow from operations is needing to be reinvested every year. Um, and that doesn't count that some of this growth is coming from these acquisitions. So you really need to understand what those are. You should understand what these investments are, why they're offsetting each other. Um, but what I like to see is that you have net um, issuance of common stock negative every year. They're buying back shares every year. You do have stock based compensation, but it's overall very low. It never gets above hundred million. And yet you're well over hundred million in stock buybacks. So you're like 10 X, um, the stock based compensation is clearly incentivizing you to pay down your debt or pay down your um, shares outstanding. And they're also paying back a growing dividend over time. Both those things look really good. Also, the fact that the buybacks are much higher than the dividends. So I really like what I'm seeing here, too. Um, key ratios, everything else had already looked good on that. So for me, I think selling these looks like a really good deal for someone who's willing to buy a potentially slightly cyclical company. These types of companies could benefit a lot if they're able to raise prices during inflation because they're going to have a relatively fixed asset base, but they are going to be reinvesting over time. So it's going to be short term earned because their assets are somewhat asset heavy in this business. Um, they do require some reinvestment. Um, the valuation is reasonable. Nothing wrong with the valuation. I think it's it's a pretty fair price to play if you're interested in this company. There's some very strong returns on invested capital. For me, it won't be on my watch list because I don't like the cyclicality that I see here. Um, and the bottoms of the cycles are at single digits, and I'd prefer the bottoms of the cycles to be at double digits. But I think this could be a very attractive company for someone willing to pay an average price for maybe a slightly above average company, slightly high quality, um, but it's not exceptionally high quality like I would like to see. Thank you for listening to this um, video, and don't forget to please subscribe, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, get notifications. That tells the YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying my content. Those likes, if you're already subscribed, are very, very valuable. So please like each and every video that you enjoy of mine to help me to grow the channel, help me grow the audience. I'm trying to get from my 1,000 subscribers up to 2,000 subscribers, 5,000, and 10,000 subscribers. I really want to hit that 5,000 subscriber goal this year. And so thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.